Hi guys, Aaron back again um, with another review. Today I'm going to be reviewing Foo Fighters' new record, Medicine at Midnight. Um, hopefully you enjoy this new style of review as well. It is a little bit different, so let me know what you think. Um, this album was released on February the 5th, 2021. Originally scheduled for release in 2020, but pushed back due to COVID. Foo Fighters' 10th studio album, the first since 2017's Concrete and Gold, and it is the shortest Foo's album ever, clocking in at just 36 minutes, 32 seconds. My first impressions, Medicine at Midnight is an alternative rock record and not just by name. It is an album of two halves, one half typical arena rocking Foo Fighters and the other half a much more experimental, almost funky in places collection of songs that show the band flexing their creative muscles. It took me a few listens to get to grips with this record, but it is definitely a good rock record. It's the parts that are more typical Foo Fighters that are in no surprise the strongest. One of the best things about the Foo Fighters is their energy, both live and on record, and with certain songs on this record, they're rarely better. So if we go to the other half of the record is a much different lesson. It would have been a bad move by Dave Grohl to swamp this record with songs such as Shame Shame and Chasing Birds, but they are still pleasant enough lessons, although not really inspiring. So track by track, first track on the album sets the tone in so many cases, certainly with Making a Fire. This one's full of catchy hooks, a well-crafted chorus and general Foo Fighters goodness. The first of the different tracks on the album and bravely selected as the first single on the album is Shame Shame. This one's quite a funky number and still quite catchy but it lacks that arena rock feel the Foo's do so well. But if it's a step in a new direction you can't fault the band for trying something new, especially when it is in no way awful. The third track on the record, Cloud Spotter, still keeps a bit of that funky feel but rocks it up a bit in a chorus that will sound huge in stadiums. I can't help but hear a bit of David Bowie in the verses but it is also sung in the same mode as All My Life. It's not one of my favourite songs on the record. Waiting on a War, one of my least favourite songs to my absolute favourite. Waiting on a War is yet more proof that Dave Grohl is the best, one of the best songwriters in modern rock music. The hooks are set in deep and get stuck in your head the first time you hear them and the lyrics are beautifully crafted. My personal favourite line being just a boy with nowhere left to go fell in love with a voice on the radio. And the build towards the end before the song Richard head off is sure to see this one added to the food set as soon as they tour again. The title track also has moments of a funky esque, but it is in no way as much as Shame Shame. It's more Queen and David Bowie than the aforementioned track, with a chorus that would again sound huge in stadiums. Another decent song without being spectacular. The second single taken off the album, No Son of Mine, is undoubtedly the heaviest on the record, featuring a chugging riff that is almost pulled from a Muse record, Dave Grohl's signature rasp. This is my pick to open up the Foo's live show on the next tour, full of energy. Another song that is more foos by the numbers than it is different, but by no means bad. Another rather middle of the road song this one, but turned into a good song with a catchy as hell chorus and head banging riff underneath. Chasing Birds is unarguably the most different song on the record. It is almost electro pop throughout, and although still relatively catchy, it isn't a patch on making a fires and cloud spotters of the record. One of my least favourite again. Finally, Love Dies Young is the final salvo to this record, and another strange one. In places it sounds like what we've come to expect from the Foo Fighters, riffs, rasps and catchy hooks, but in other places it morphs into a much more contemporary pop sound with clean guitar licks not dissimilar to that on a 1975 record. So for my review of Medicine by Midnight, um, it isn't a bad record by any stretch of the imagination. I really enjoyed listening to it the five times I've listened to it. Um, I'll certainly be listening to it again after I've had a little bit of time to think about what I've said. Um, Favourite songs on it, Waiting on a War is absolutely brilliant. Um, really like the first track as well. Um, again, some of the funky numbers, not my favourite. Chasing Birds, it, it's probably my least favourite on the record. Um, shame, Shame, I think it has its moments, but it's like I think it's just a little bit too different. Um, so for me, I'm going to give this record a 7 out of 10. Um, definitely foos by the numbers in places, but like I say, different. But as said previously, you can't target the band for doing something differently, especially when it doesn't detract from the record and they haven't flooded the record with it, so they can't really be guilty of anything. Um, definitely check it out and give it a listen if you haven't already. Make sure you like the video, make sure you subscribe. Let me know if you like this different type of video as well with the um, the kind of PowerPoint thing going on in the background. Um, definitely up for doing more of them. So yeah, let me know. Subscribe if you're new. Thanks for watching.